Who would shed a tear for them? With its fearsome reputation, fearsome appearance, the Isle has few human allies in its struggle for survival. Rivers that once thronged with the giants, then echoed to the sound of hunters' rifles, now are almost empty of both. In the flooded rivers of Australia's remote Gulf country, a tiny task force searches out the last big crocs. But the object of the hunt is not to kill. The men at Edward River capture crocodiles alive. The wet in the Gulf of Carpentaria, the hot, damp, tropical north. This annual monsoon season feeds a teeming variety of life. Three months of humid fertility to balance the dusty dry of the rest of the year. The wet provides a wealth of food through the chain of animal life in the Gulf. With an unbeatable weight of persistent numbers, the green ants take their share of the riches. Despite the abundance provided by the rain, it's not an easy country for its inhabitants. It's a land of predators at all levels. The green tree ants will swarm over and kill any insect that their mass attack can defeat. Hundreds of repeated bites will kill the caterpillar. The caterpillar will be carried by the cooperative group of hunters back to the nest of leaves high in the tree to be fed to the green ant's larvae. It's the wet. And like all the predators of the gulf, the green tree ant is stocking up on food. Lashed by the regular driving rain, the palm trees are an introduced element of tropical glamour in the endless swamp and bush of the Gulf Shores. This is Edward River, the heart of crocodile country. We filmed the crocodile right through the wet, joined the men who search out the few remaining nests in the tangled maze of winding rivers. In the wet, even those confused landmarks are lost in an endless sheet of water. Aerial photographs help Joe Brittle locate the nests. The target for the hunt is not the harmless Australian freshwater crocodile. Joe Brittle scars the rivers that are the home of the massive saltwater crocodile. Because this reptile's killed man, his plight attracts little sympathy. This year, Joe Brettle's racing against time to find and save the crocodile's young. For the second season in succession, the balance of the wet has tipped against the saltwater crocodile. A cyclone and nine days of continuous rain lifted water levels. The riverside nests built by the last saltwater crocodiles have been flooded out and drowned. The Edward River Project aims to restore, at least in part, the population of Australia's most feared animal. To save the crocodile, reptile expert Joe Brittle and his assistants Ned Edwards and Stingery Barney of Edward River must find and steal the eggs from the few remaining nests. It's a difficult and dangerous task. Difficult because nests are now rare. Dangerous, because the saltwater crocodile is a known man-eater. The project was devised by an Australian-based scientist who's a world authority on the crocodile, Dr. Robert Bustard, 
director of the Applied Ecology Unit. His plan? To steal the eggs and young, raise them through their first difficult year, safe from animal and human predation. The farm will be operated by the people of Edward River. A controlled harvest will provide an income from valuable skins. Looks like most of the nests are going to be lost out this season, Mr. Ned. Don't you reckon? Too much high water. Too much high water. Oh, this used to be a good place here. It's too much high water. Find anything, Stingeray? Nothing. Nothing? You had a good look? Good luck right up, right around the... Nothing, huh? Mm -hmm. Dad, what do you think? Why, why no, nothing you find? Why don't you find anything? What do you think? I haven't found a guana. Hmm? I haven't found a guana. You find a guana? A guana in a guana. It's a guana in the water. It's a in the water. All right, okay. let's get in. The search continues. Further up the flooded Marlaman River, Joe knows of a nesting site regularly used by a large saltwater crocodile. It's on higher ground and may have been saved from the rising water. The Marlaman River is, by Gulf standards, a well-traveled waterway. The big croc here, accustomed to the harmless sound of the stock boats, may have less fear of man. Attacks on men by saltwater crocodiles guarding the nest have often been recorded. Just watch for the croc, huh? Tell me she's there. Yeah. Joe Breddle carries a gun. Only the worst emergency would persuade him to use it against his beloved crocodiles. To shoot one of the remaining big ones would be a tragedy. Ned Edwards and Stingery Barney are more traditionally armed. They too know the crocodile. The flooding has forced the searching group to leave the protection of the boat and wade through knee-deep water and concealing grass towards the nest. The mother croc stays near the nest. She's certainly in the water nearby. This is the crocodile's slide the pathway to the river from the nest. The stirred mud shows she's only just moved into concealment. But the female crocodile has been guarding offspring that are already dead. In this nest, perhaps 50 baby crocodiles a significant number of replacements for the shrunken population have been killed by the extremes of the wet. Even eggs must have oxygen to survive. The embryo, formed into the beginnings of a crocodile, is recently drowned. One of the more than 1,000 crocodiles now held in pens and pools at the Edward River farm defends the man-made territory he's claimed for his own. Joe's son, Robbie Breddle, treats the crocodile's attacks casually. But the five-footer could inflict serious injury to his tearing jaws. This croc with a blind eye from an earlier hunter's bullet is named One-Eyed Jack. He's contemptuously aggressive with man. <laughs> His learned lack of fear means that he may not be released back into the river. 
Edward River, isolated all year round by its location on the distant shores of the Gulf of Carpentaria, is further closed in by the annual wet. In this isolation, the community has maintained its traditional culture. The children of the Munkin and the Tayore still sing at daily events in Edward. The island-style song, Kesa, tells of the boxes of freight marked ERM, Edward River Mission, brought in from Cairns. times weekly, Cairns-based Bush Pilots Airways calls in at Edward with mail and supplies. Bush Pilots' network of regular flights through the wildest areas of remote Australia is the only constant link with the outside world for Edward River. During the dry, trucks make the long haul through Cape York to Edward River. But the wet completely cuts off access along the rough bush roads. The hard packed sand of the Edward River airstrip allows the twin-engined aircraft in during all but the worst of the monsoon. Strange cargo. A former crocodile shooter from Weeper has trapped a number of the crocodiles which he formerly hunted for their skins. The saltwater crocodile has been little studied by science, and the experienced hunter is still the expert on their location and habits. The live crocodiles are carefully delivered in damp sacks. You must have got onto some good spot. Oh, well. There's not much here now. No, no. The weeper crocodiles are released into the Edward River Farm's large enclosures. While the crocodile's jaws are still firmly bound, Joe determines the sex of the animal. The rope that held the croc's jaws closed has chafed the skin. Now the crocodile must be released and persuaded into the pool. He's angry and aggressive. Crocodiles are untamable maintaining their fierce habits even after years in captivity. But the lunges and fierce snapping of the jaws are not just a temperamental viciousness. The crocodile is acting in defense, repelling an apparent aggressor. In Australia, man's contact with the saltwater crocodile has been almost entirely for one purpose the killing of the crocodile for his skin. Apart from a widespread fear of the giant crocodile's hunting habits, his ability to wait motionless near the water's edge to seize his prey, little is generally known about his behavior. Like other creatures in the animal kingdom, the saltwater crocodile claims territory which he'll defend against intruders. The crocodile is straying into ground that has already been claimed. The owner of the territory doesn't intend to allow this trespassing. Slowly, very slowly, he opens his jaws in what appears to be a warning display, telling the intruder of his mistake. With many animals, a display of ritual threats is often enough to cause an intruder to beat a retreat. But on this occasion, the crocodile continues to advance into the other's territory. The 
two crocodiles lie motionless. The stillness that's so deceptive. The attack is more symbolic than real. The crocodile's not defending his territory with savage bites, but with snapping blows of his jaw.